Hi friends, I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some audiobook recommendations um, and in particular this video is going to be focused on non-fiction books. So I'm splitting this video into two. The first video will be non-fiction audiobook recommendations and the second video will be fiction audiobook recommendations. Just because I think sometimes I'm really in the mood for a non-fiction audiobook um, and I tend to reach for um, non-fiction audiobooks somewhat more than a fiction audiobook um, and it's also one of my favourite ways to consume non-fiction literature so um, yeah this is the first section of it, it's going to be only non-fiction recommendations and I have a fair few to get through, I think about eight or so recommendations, let me see, seven, I have seven audiobook recommendations for the non-fiction category and then later this week I will share the fiction recommendations and I'll link it down below when that comes up as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoy these recommendations. I hope you get some good ones and do feel free to leave a comment with any recommendations you have for me for non-fiction audiobook recommendations. That would be brilliant and yeah. Let's get into it. The first book I want to talk to you about is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, an absolutely incredible book. It taught me so, so much about sleep. Um, I was definitely somebody who used to kind of burn the candle at both ends and used to like go for party nights out and then not really sleep very well and take like disco naps and I worked shifts so my sleep pattern was all over the place. Um, this was more kind of when I was a student and then I read this towards the end of my study, maybe just as I started working. It totally changed my perspective on sleep, totally changed my appreciation of it, totally changed everything about how I think about sleep. Um, and I just feel so much better for reading this book. Like I feel like if, if there's any books that changed my life, this is definitely one of them. And I would 100% recommend it to like absolutely everybody. Um, it was just brilliant. And it's, it's so interesting and it teaches you a lot, not just about yourself, but about other people as well. So like I learned a lot about kind of teenagers sleep and like often teenagers are kind of labeled as lazy, but actually their sleep pattern doesn't let them, um, it kind of changes their circadian rhythm changes as they become teenagers and um, just kind of, thinking about how our society doesn't really function um, for teenagers and doesn't kind of take into account their uh, kind of lived experience, I guess, of that kind of hormone change and their the rhythm change. And yeah, I felt a lot of feelings about that. I felt quite a lot of anger about that at the time. Um, and yeah, I def definitely think it will help me kind of going forward and kind of the way I approach different people as well. So I thought it was a really, really interesting book and um, would really highly recommend it, which I will probably say for every single title on this list. And I'll have to watch myself not to say that for every single one because it'll just get a bit repetitive and boring. But the next book that I would like to recommend is How We Fail by Elizabeth May. I really, really like this book. Um, it's very, it was more kind of a personal journey that I went on, I guess, in reading it because I used to have quite a big issue with failure and I used to have quite a lot of hang-ups about it. And I used to think of certain things that had happened in my life as kind of personal feelings and um, I no longer feel that way about them. Um, but not just because of this book, but this was kind of part of my journey to kind of processing failure. And I feel like my outlook about things is a lot more different now. And part of it was aided by this book because it really helped me to kind of see other people fail in different kinds of ways and think about how they overcame obstacles and overcame the feeling of failure because I tend to think of failure more of kind of like a feeling now rather than an actual genuine thing. Like I don't really think you can really fail at things. I think it's more what you tell yourself and how you speak to yourself, whether or not you feel and perceive it as a failure. Um, so yeah, my total outlook about failing has changed. Um, and for me, this book was kind of part of my journey. So I think that's why I feel kind of an emotional attachment to it. And I think if you in any way struggle with feelings of failure or um, feel alone in failing in any kind of way, this book might help you to kind of feel less alone and feel, recognize failure as like a kind of human thing. I've never listened to the podcast, which was like the birthplace of this book, but um, I've heard good things as well. So maybe I should give that a listen at some point, but definitely recommend the book and especially in the audiobook format because it was a podcast and it kind of feels like a podcast. So if you're coming to audiobooks from more of the podcast realm, then this one is definitely one that you might find an easier transition book. I also want to recommend Afropean by Johnny Pitts. I absolutely, absolutely love this book. Um, I recommended my local library bought it. They've got a copy. I'm like considering buying myself a physical copy. 
Um, I will literally probably throw this book into the hands of basically anyone who will listen. I really, really loved it. It's a kind of part social commentary, part travelogue, part history of Europe um, and in particular the history and experiences of black people in Europe. So Johnny Pitts kind of travels around Europe on a and into Scandinavia on a um, shoestring budget really and um, meets all these different people and um, different walks of life, different lived experiences and he talks to them and um, kind of tells their story in a way but through his own eyes and his experiences meeting them and like describes the places that he's in and stuff. I just really really loved it and Johnny Pitts is from Sheffield and has a really nice accent to listen to so um, I could listen to Johnny Pitts read to me all day. It was so nice to listen to um, and I would definitely recommend the audiobook for that reason in particular. Um, he also has a piece in The Book of Sheffield. Is it The Book of Sheffield? The Little Book of Sheffield. The Coma Press title and I would like to pick that up because um, yeah I will now read basically anything that Johnny Pitts produces and even better if he narrates it. So yeah absolutely love that and um, the next book on my list is My Name Is Why by Lem Sassay. This is a story of Lem who um, grew up in care in the UK and um, it's his battle to kind of find out his story and um, we get records of like um, social worker records um, we get different kinds of material input into the book and there's lots of different narrators that narrate the book. Um, it's very, very beautiful as an audiobook. It's very moving, upsetting to listen to because it's just so much injustice and so much pain and suffering that didn't need to happen, um, really. Um, but it happened at the hands of the British government and something that I think is worth learning about. Um, and especially because there's so much that um, as outsiders to the care system we don't know and we don't understand and put a lot of trust in it maybe but we don't necessarily understand it fully and um, but this book was beautiful um, really appreciated kind of limbs to say sharing so much of what is a really personal journey really um, and I think it really has the potential to kind of make positive change to today's care system and you know shape the way we think about how we treat people who are in our care, um, especially if you're anyone who kind of keeps records on people. Like I used to work in a prison and used to kind of input things into people's records um, and it definitely made me reflect on that process of being involved in that and the inherent power imbalance in that exchange. And yeah, I think if you are somebody who has a job that involves that, it's definitely one that I would especially recommend to you. So beautiful book. I'd also like to recommend In Black and White by Alexandra Wilson. This is the story of Alexandra. It's her memoir um, and it's about her experiences as a black working class and a young female barrister in England. Um, lots of different kind of intersecting identities that all kind of she talks about in different ways through the book and how they kind of positively and negatively affect her experiences as a barrister. So she also talks about the way that she is perceived and like how people treat her based on kind of um, assumptions, perceptions, um, beliefs. Uh, it's very, very interesting. She also kind of gives a bit of a critical analysis of the criminal justice system and she kind of talks about how she can see why people think that it's failing. I felt like she was quite sort of balanced, um, which might come from her being a barrister. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, really thought it was a very interesting book. Um, Alexandra Wilson has a very interesting perspective on the justice system and it's definitely one that I'm really glad that I read. Um, and I think the audiobook was really nice just because Alexandra Wilson narrates it herself and has a really nice kind of way of speaking. And that's always just really nice to listen to. I'm quite picky with my narrators for books. I really like when a memoir is kind of told by the author or by somebody with the same accent as the author and the same kind of way of speaking. Yeah, I, I would just say that up front that I am quite fussy, but I would definitely like other people's recommendations. So if you have any, I would love to hear them. Um, but the next book I want to recommend is A Dutiful Boy by Mohsen Zaidi. This is just beautiful. It's about a man who tells his experience growing up gay and Muslim in the UK and feeling like he's not accepted and struggling to accept himself and we follow his journey to self-acceptance and self-love and it's just 
it's really upsetting in places, it's very moving, um, it had me really close to tears. I also think that Mawson has a really beautiful way of narrating his own story and I love that and it's just, it's really moved me this book and I'm not sure that I really can under, I can really explain why fully, um, but I loved it and would completely fully recommend it. Um, I think it got either longlisted or shortlisted for the Polari Prize this year, which is a LGBT plus um, book prize in the UK, definitely worth checking out. Um, and yeah, very worthy of all the accolades that this book gets. I really enjoyed it. And finally for the non-fiction section, um, we have Motherwell by Deborah Orr. This is a memoir by, about Deborah Orr, who was a Scottish journalist um, who moved to London um, and did the kind of classic thing that a lot of Scottish people do that's kind of, if you're not from Scotland that's quite common that people um, grew up in Scotland and live in Scotland until a certain age when they want to kind of start a, a career path and typically a lot of people have to move to London to pursue careers um, because there's just not the there's not the opportunities in Scotland um, that there are elsewhere and particularly in London and you know there's a lot of things that we could discuss about that, but I thought it was very interesting to kind of read Deborah Orr's account of that and kind of talk about what was at play in her decision to move to London and her experiences living in London. Um, but it was also mostly about her kind of upbringing and she reflects about being working class in Scotland and kind of the lessons that her parents taught her and um, I found it particularly interesting because it felt very personal to me in the sense that Deborah Orr was born in the in a similar place and at a similar time to my, my parents and so there was a lot of kind of reflections in myself about yes what lessons Deborah Orr has taken but possibly what lessons my parents have taken and then thinking about what they've passed on to me and um, kind of the crossovers in our lives at certain points um, not physically crossing over, more sort of the lessons that we learned and kind of the reflections that we have made through our lives. Um, really interesting sort of thoughts that came about through reading this book. So maybe my enjoyment of it is more personal than I necessarily realise. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, really loved it. And it's beautifully, beautifully narrated. I can't remember the narrator's name but she has a lovely Scottish accent and I just really, really loved it. So we'd highly recommend that one. So that's everything for this list of non-fiction recommendations. I hope you found some good recommendations within it, um, some that kind of pique your interest, pique your fancy, and do let me know again if you have had any recommendations for me, that would be brilliant because I'm always on the lookout for more non-fiction audiobooks and um, always kind of searching for my next um, best hit, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, that's everything from me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again in my next one.